crazy daddy what up people happy happy sunday welcome to the black wolf project today we're talking about marcus garvey marcus garvey marcus messiah matter of fact the honorable marcus messiah garvey's birthday was august 17th and it's something that we've been planning for for a long time was trying to talk about it last week missed it but we got we said we got to talk about the honorable marcus messiah garvey what's up team how y'all doing today Oh, I'm alive. I'm good. Right. Oh, the queen's here. The queen's here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Drum roll together. Drink the queen's here. Oh, different leather. Yeah, the interiors and a different sunroof or moonroof. Let me get it right. Moonroof. I mean, oh, she listen. froze. I think she froze. When you when you getting at it the way she getting at it, I can't be mad. I mean, right, we gotta hold the slander till she get back, y'all. No slander. She froze, y'all. She froze. I don't know what you talking about. There was no slander intended on my end. Listen, it ain't intended. It's fun, but in fun we call it slander. <laughs> there she is. There's that smile. Yeah. There you is go. that is that new leather? Did you get a new upholstery or a new vehicle? It's a different vehicle. Damn. Hot damn. I, I am in test drive mode right now because I don't know what I want. Okay. Hey, that makes sense. Hey, it ain't tricking if you got it. So that makes sense. It. You get it. I just want to say that Tracy's t-shirt is phenomenal. It's one of the greatest yes, t-shirts I've ever seen. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, put the, I got to go put that on the record. You know, for those watching the replay, I want to put that on the record. I think she froze again, y'all. Yeah, yes. It's all gravy. She out in the mix, so it is what it is, though. Yeah, tell her to come. Oh, right. Kamari, how you, man? You always asking about us. How you doing, good brother? Yeah, man. Hey, man. I'm I'm just living, man. Found out another one of my homies got uh got COVID. Oh, COVID is killing the world right now, figuratively and literally. So let's yeah, man. All it's, it's tough out there, man. It's it's tough out there, man. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, I mean, listen, but we're seeing hospital rates go up. School systems being shut down, like it's literally crazy out here. It's going back. It's a, it's a, I, you I know, think so. I think so. forgot. It's, it's nutty out here, man. I think so. But listen, y'all, we are we talking about Marcus Garvey. So, in the comments, let us know what you think about Marcus Garvey. How you feel about Marcus Garvey? Do you think Marcus had any impact on the culture, black culture, white culture, black wealth culture? Let us know what you think about the most honorable. I like that phrase, black wealth culture, because it is a culture. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely it, a culture. It's like a thing. It's a black wealth culture. It's a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, with any culture, right? We it's got its good and its bad, but at the end of the day, it's it's ours, and we gonna stick mm -hmm. beside it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stick beside it. Yep, you caught it, Tracy. <laughs> Absolutely. So listen, y'all, I got to tell y'all, the listening audience, right, Tracy, I, I can't even be mad at her. Her shenanigans be just as just as reckless as mine at times. So Tracy's like late for the show. And then she sends me a video with my cousin, whose idea, <laughs> I'm guessing it was probably hers, that she done froze again. Hey, listen, she in the mix, man. She yeah, can't hear yeah, you. I can't get these bars off. <laughs> she can't hear you. She can't hear you, Slander. I thought no, it was I don't think so. She had to watch the replay. I thought well, it was funny. anyway, her, her my cousin is her friend, and I, I bet I bet my cousin probably put her up to doing a video, smiling on the video, dancing on the video, oh. talking about somebody gonna be late. So, Tracy, <laughs> was that was that slanderous video you sent us? My cousin's idea. Yes, I knew it. What I tell you? <laughs> you did, he did say that. Movie. He said that. He was like, "That wasn't Tracy's idea. That was her idea." <laughs> <laughs> no, Tracy's not above it. She's not above it, but I, I knew what it was. I knew what it was. <laughs> so what you're saying is like, you know, that runs in the family. Y'all y'all slander. Like I said, I, I would be mad at it because it's something that I would have done. So <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You would have did the same. Even, even though my I'm freezing, I hear everything. <laughs> See, okay. I told you. All right. All right. Told you. So I, I won't call you bougie queen no more. <laughs> oh, man. Listen. You didn't hear that, right? I'm actually not opposed to the, the term bougie. No, no, I, I play it, though. No. I play it. <laughs> All right, so people are starting to come into the room and fill up the pews. All right, so we're about to get at it. Before we get at it, our B.O.B. of the week. 
Our B.O.B. of the week is I don't have it prepped. <laughs> hey, come on. What's going on, good brother? You, you all right over there? It's be black star. It's rough day, y'all. No, yeah, man. Bro. No, man. We got we to gotta honor our brother, man. That's um, right. That's Jose. right. We got to honor our brother. Jose. Yes. Canseco. Kamari, Kamari done went and got the, 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 the new sexy lighting, and now he can't um, you know, figure out how to, to find the websites we need. Listen, I haven't even perfected this lighting yet, though. You got the blue that's lights the behind you, like you know that's, what I mean. That's the that's you the like you about to you like you about to shoot some OnlyFans content. <laughs> no, I can't do OnlyFans content. No more. You know, I want to do R-rated content. You're not allowing that no more. I said no, you can't do that. Real quick before we get into this, though, what do y'all think about that? Think about what? I'm sorry. OnlyFans. When Shutting you don't control, down. when you don't control the platforms or or, or the way you, like, yeah, you get to do what they tell you to do. I mean, it's just that simple. But it ain't really the platform. The platforms had no choice because you know allegedly it was the banks or the credit cards. Yeah, the, pay, the payment, the payment, uh, what's the names was like no, so it wasn't even them. This is where crypto comes into play. You know, um, there's an actual um, there's an actual site that's uh, similar to OnlyFans. That um, this is what they do. Um, oh, really? And they, they've picked up traffic. Also, I noticed that the um the rapper Tiger he done created a whole new platform where he's charging less percentage to do the same thing. So I mean, put it like this: they they're not going to be able to stop it. People are going to like create that content and get that content one way or another. Listen, man, that's the that's the oldest that's the oldest uh, profession in the world, and Absolutely. and on top of that is like the second or third biggest business in the country. So I want to know. What's going to happen to OnlyFans, the platform, though? Because no matter if you take it off or not, that's what you're synonymous with. So I want to know what happens. I mean, they're I saw gonna get, Tumblr, they're going to get murdered. I saw Tumblr make the same decision, and no one uses Tumblr anymore. Well, they're saying that they're trying to angle to get um, capital, venture capital, so yeah. they can potentially go IPO at some point. Yeah, but I if you have really IPO, model. all they want, but without the... Without the 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 the, the, the creatives, the the, right. the the sex work creatives, or the exactly. uh, you know the that's di- that's dead in the water. That Plenty. you have no user base. You built your back, and that's another thing too, man. They built their back. They built they built their entire platform on the backs of those of those folks that create that kind of content. Correct. And it's kind of foul too, like you know what I mean? Like okay, correct. None because of us I think, can I think. start out as a platform for creatives where they could literally control the revenue that came in for mm-hmm. their paintings or for a lot of their other uh poetry and mm-hmm. ideas it got pretty much exacerbated or or, or perverted <laughs> by the other forms of people who were using it but it blew up because of it but so, see my thing is those people are creatives too just because you use your body as a creative doesn't mean you're not a creative i absolutely agree and, and yes, that's man. the reason why they're getting shut down when they were the reason why people even knew what OnlyFans were. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. Sex work is work, dog. So my thing like, is... There's a lesson in this, right? <laughs> Don't turn your back on your audience. Yeah, they they created a they whole separate get mad platform mad. and did the same thing and still service that those people, that audience. But yeah. it wasn't them. It was the payment processors. The payment no, processors. No, that's what they're saying. I don't believe I think that. that was cap. I think that's part cap. But even if it's not part cap, right? They could have figured out another way to still allow them to collect payment. What have, what payment that? processes. No, but payment processes are working on all these other porn sites as well. So cats are a lot paid. of the porn sites have gone to crypto. Yes, they have. <laughs> I they mean the, the 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 hub has allegedly. I'm not saying that I've I've you know I'm just talking about <laughs> from what I've heard. Hey, listen, this is a judgment zone. This is a judgment zone. <laughs> Like no, but, all, yeah. but all, all, all jokes aside, though, my thing is they could have figured out a way to still work with those folks if they wanted to. Right. Um, That's my point. They built those audiences on that platform. Now they got to move an audience off a platform to a new platform. It's going to cost them hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And think about it, Some of them probably got like hundreds of videos uploaded. They got to like, you know, move that somewhere else. But I mean, you know what? To, to, all right. So to take it a step further, right? This is about controlling your platform. Right. Even as we, even as we sit here and have this conversation, look, we don't control really the platforms that we put our content on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, and I think there's a lesson in that. Like when you have folks that support what you do, um, that you build a community with, you got to make sure you have a way to contact them outside of these platforms. 
Facts. Facts. Don Johnson checking in. Says he's trying to get that Tracy money when he grew up. <laughs> Me too, Don. Me too. <laughs> All right, but real quick, I got the I got the link. It's up. It's up. My apologies in the delay. But wanted to salute and celebrate our brother Jose. Jose has put out a book. Congratulations to Jose. He is yeah. now a I bought the book. author. So cool, yeah. Jose. Yeah, Congratulations man. to Jose. Congratulations. Jose, man. It's called Reflections of Love, Lust. Oh, perfect segue with the OnlyFans, man. Couldn't have teamed it up any better. <laughs> the Reflections of Love, Lust, and Romance, music, Musings, and, ro- and Poetry. So Listen. Congratulations. So- and I'll be copying this today. Yeah, I got my copy, and Jose is actually the next the next guest on the By the Hood podcast, and he explains um not only the book but his background, and it's a very great episode because he was very transparent about his shortcomings and um working on himself, and even um getting a chance to put this book out and what the book's about. So salute to Jose, man, he's doing amazing work, and um he should be proud because it's when you put yourself out there, the book that that thing could outlast you. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. um that's an amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment. It's an amazing accomplishment. Shout out to intellectual property and being a part of Black Wealth. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. indeed. So salutes to you. Everybody go out and grab a copy of Jose's book. We got to support our own Jose's in the community. Jose is here every week. Yeah. I know a lot of y'all here every week too, but Jose's here every week. He's one of us. So yeah. we got to support our I got, own. I got to get a physical copy. I got a, uh, I got the what's the name copy, the... Uh, the digital. The, the digital Kindle. Copy. Yeah, the yeah. Kindle. I got the I got the Kindle joint too. I'm gonna get the regular one. I'm gonna get Jose to sign it back on when I'm when I'm ready to come back outside again because I think I'm about to go back into hibernation with y'all folks, man. Listen, the way these these COVID spikes are happening, the way that <laughs> these school districts are rocking, I don't blame you, Jim. I might be right there with you. It's a lot. It's a whole lot happening. It's a whole whole lot happening. I mean, Mississippi is just about all the way shut down. Their school their school system. I mean, it's crazy right now. Yeah, did y'all see? Um, did y'all see forty five last night? Um, I'm talking to his base, and he told them to get the shot, and they start booing him. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, you yes. know what? They, they were, that's that's interesting, right? Because they usually they listen to their daddy. They was like, not even you, dog. Yeah, so I thought that I thought that was interesting. Yeah, no. but all right, let's get into it, y'all. Remember, we're talking about the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey tonight. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey tonight. What do y'all think about Marcus? Was he on to something? And let me not just say his his first name just all cavalier like that. I gotta put some respect on the ancestor. What do you think about the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey? Like, was he on to something? Was he too bombastic? I've seen some people say that. I've seen some people say that um, he didn't have great business acumen. But what I find really interesting when they say he doesn't have great business acumen is they never factor in the government's role in his quote-unquote demise. Right. But but before we get into a team, what, what do y'all what do y'all feel about Marcus Garvey? Real sweet, short and sweet. All right. So I'll be very fast. Um, that's what she said. But the thing is, um, to your point, right? When I think about Marcus Garvey, <laughs> and I think about even um some of the things that didn't go the way he planned or what have you, I think that Marcus Garvey got to the point where he's an idea. It's this, it's this YouTube clip with Will Smith where he says, I don't want to be an icon. I want to be an idea. And I understood what he was saying. Like the idea of me is, is, is more powerful and it will be able to inspire others that come after me. And I think that's what Garvey is, regardless of his shortcomings. Um, and he has major accomplishments. He left us with ideas that you see other organization and other leaders like, you know, pattern themselves after him. So he kind of laid the blueprint and he's bigger than an icon. He's he reached that point, as Will Smith says, he's an idea. So to me, that's what I think of when I think of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Absolutely. What about you, Corey? I mean, he the blueprint. He's the 21st century blueprint. I mean, the 20th century blueprint. Right. He w- he was. Before Emmett Till, he was the single greatest moving force in the 20th century. And he was, I mean, all of the all of the leaders that came behind him were Garveyites. Yeah. All of them. And so you a person who can inspire that many people, you know, literally is the greatest. Like people talk about the civil rights movement, 
people talk about all these other movements. His movement was the greatest movement of the 20th century for black people, period. And it's hands down, and it's, it's not even close because he inspired all of the people who created those other movements. And so you gotta you gotta you gotta put the you gotta put the mantle where you know you gotta put the crown on the king. That's uh what Nipsey say the greatest act is to inspire, right? Yep. Um what about you, Tracy? What do you think? How do you feel? I agree. I feel the same way. I feel like he definitely was the rubric um to help inspire the brains and the hearts and the ideas of those that came behind him and plant the seeds for them to execute them probably in a more efficient way and possibly a little bit more of a um, clear and concise way without some of his complications. Um, even though he was a complicated man, he definitely was an idea man. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, hey, Mario, what up? Corey said something you ain't like, man. You, you gotta throw my brother no, off the uh, listen, I'm, I'm still not. <laughs> My apologies, Corey. I'm still, I'm still getting used to it. Shut up! I don't have my mouse the way I need to have it. I, got, I see, bro. You like discombobulated? You discombobulated tonight, man. I got my desk. You know that can go up and down, but you know I, I'm still getting used to it. So it to that's, my head. That's what she said. Listen, yo, Corey says something. I, I want to know. I guess everybody's perspective. He said the greatest of the. You said the 20th century, right? Yep. You said the blueprint. Who's the blueprint for the 21st century? Mm. Oh, we can think about that, but go ahead, Kamari. What's your perspective? But no, that's that's a great question. So I, 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 I have I have a candidate. A candidate. Yeah. All right. Well, hold that. Outside, Corey. Outside, 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 outside of me, Corey. Outside of me. No, but hold that, I'm Corey. Joking, I'm joking. Hold, I'm joking. I'm joking, bro. I'm joking. Hold that. Hold that, Corey, because that's a great question. So everybody, who do y'all feel will be the 21st century black wealth catalyst? So put that in the chat. But um, for me. Whew, um, Marcus was um, phenomenal, man, in, in, in so many respects, in so many regards. I mean, we talk about him from the Black Wealth Movement, but I think a lot of us forget that his thing was culture first, Africa for Africans. And I think we haven't totally figured that out in the power of it, but everything else, I think we're well, well, well on our way to figuring all that out. So I'm a big Garvey fan. I mean, I find it interesting that Garvey was a was a mentee of Booker T. Washington, and a lot of folks have kind of forgotten about Booker T. But he definitely was a benefactor of his work. But again, I'm a big Garvey I fan because, as Corey said, everybody else kind of followed his lineage. You know, from Elijah Poole, aka Elijah Muhammad, to Malcolm X, to even Dr. Martin Luther King, even though they don't really talk about it that much. So. He's definitely an icon. Definitely an icon. And I would I would agree with you, Corey. I definitely it's, would say he was he was the motivating factor for the There, 20th, there were two 20th seminal events in the early part of the 21st century. <laughs> yo, Don is a troll, yo. Don is a troll, but go ahead, Corey. There were two seminal events in the in the first half of the 20th century. Uh well, three. The the bombing of Black Wall Street, Marcus Garvey and his movement with the UNIA. And then the the murder in of Emmett Till. Those three things are were the catalyst events for all the other events that you saw throughout the rest of the century, because the the, the civil rights movement came out of Garveyites and the the murder of Emmett Till. And and um. You could you could talk about the Rosa Parks Rosa, stuff. Rosa Parks that, and, and that, the that, that, that was not, that was just they were looking for an event to kick it off. That was the event. Yeah, but my my question to you about what you're saying though, right? And not that I disagree with you, because I the Emmett Till, the, the more I read, the more I recognize just how seminal of a moment that was, right? Absolutely. Um, Leaving because, the casket open was the thing that created a lot of the 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 the, the, the pushback that you saw through the civil rights movement. They were but, looking for Ahead, the pushback I want to give you a little bit, just a little, just a little pushback is about the Tulsa bombing, right? Because, from my understanding, like, um, not that we just took that on the chin, but nothing really, like, really came from that. So, as as a as a business for for businesses, I'm just talking about for uh, building black businesses, right? Because they were black wall, quote, I hate that term. So, 
black Wall Streets all over the country, right? But but the reason I don't want the what I'm saying is when you could say that it was a seminal event because remember it was rebuilt. So it definitely was rebuilt and it and it and it, and it went away because they started to to give and a lot of us a lot of us didn't even know about that till years later because they kept telling the history that's why i really don't consider that one of the seminal events although now in retrospect i mean it's a part of our history all this is a part of our history as people here um but when i think about the seminal events the other two that you mentioned were uh, uh, of you say far yeah yeah that's all i was saying i do think tulsa is a bit of revisionist history because i think it got blended in with all the other Exactly. Exactly. It was, it was part of because to me, the Harlem Renaissance was part of the you like so all of those things were like Black Wall Street sort of things, right? Because that that's something else that's not talked about. How the Harlem Renaissance reshaped a lot of how yeah. we look at all of the stuff that we do, right? And so it's 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 very important. And it's very and, and all of those things happened around the same time, right? And so that's why it's important for us to recognize the ancestors, right, and the elders, right? Facts. So the ancestors, like when, when the, the one of the things that burns my burns my soul is when people talk about we are not our ancestors. No, the hell we are not. You are one hundred percent right because our ancestors did greater things than we've ever accomplished. Correct. With less. With with way less, so we we need to get stepping. We we didn't damn drop the ball, and we talking about we not like them. You damn for sure right. No, because they're right. They they left the blueprint. I mean, you know, I studied Malcolm Garvey Huey, and it's for a reason because, um, and that's a fire song by the way by Dead Press. But um, <laughs> you know, it really is. But uh, no, but when you when you talk about Garvey, um, the one thing that Kamari mentioned is he understood something that I think even a lot of our leaders that uh, came after him didn't, which is the importance of culture as it pertains to unity and black wealth. Right. And Jimmy, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. Corey, Corey calls a lot of the leaders um, Garveyites, which they were, but in order to truly be a Garveyite, you had to be a Pan-Africanist and many people in, in current day don't give Pan-Africanists the credit that they deserve. Cause they really pushed for a lot of the change, interchange, and externally in the overall community and landscape in which we're dealing in now. Yeah, man, they put and another thing you mentioned too, that Kamari talked about, and yeah, he definitely did. He said even religion, like, you know, black first and then your religion. Like, so he, even as it pertains to religion, right? But um, you talked about the, the connection with Booker T. And I always think about like, everything always goes back, if you, if you keep going back to to uh, to Freddie D, right? Um. Freddie D is like you can you can make a, a an actual yeah, line from draw, everybody draw, draw the yeah. everybody goes back to Freddie D you know from Booker T W E B R you know um wait, 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 who's Freddie D Frederick Douglass oh Frederick Douglass yes yo oh, yeah, that's, that, that, come on man well no I mean yes I agree with that but I, that's, that's my fault though I actually actually I stayed in Freddie D's dorm in Lincoln so I'm just used to saying Freddie D because right. that's what we yeah. call that's what we call the dorm like yo I'm in Freddie D. No, I agree. Martin Delaney did a lot of work too that that doesn't get um, recognized along with um, Octavius. Uh, I can't think of Octavius. Cotto. Last name right Octavius now, Cotto. Yes, thank you, Octavius Cotto. Yes, a lot of work. A lot. Of I mean, work. there's a number of people we can name. I was yeah. just saying, and, and specifically, like there, there's so many people that put in a lot of work that need to be acknowledged. I mean, maybe we should do a better job of that because we're having a Garvey show. There's people that. Um, we probably could, you know, educate others on that aren't familiar with that. So maybe we should. That's why I specifically said 20th century. Yeah. So maybe we should do um, some more shows like this where we talk about one of our um, ancestors who uh, helped lay the foundation for the things that we're doing now. But um, Garvey, it was just easy. So when we actually were having this conversation, I was like, you know, we all love Garvey. This, this is easy. Well, you know his birthday was, was the other day. It was the 17th. Too. But real quick, let's check in with our folks. Yeah. All right, can't be. How you doing? You're all right, Jay Patterson. Uh, we got we got some we got some bars. The mm -hmm. markets inside Garvey's UNIA was a great psychological movement, even if it wasn't a great economic one. But I respect the effort with the Black Star Line. Mm -hmm. All right, Don. Don says, "All right, yeah, we got that one." But just for uh, the giggles. That bird gang be like money. Tracy when he grows he up. Got bird gang money. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's hey, up, Jerome? Man. How you doing, brother? Jerome, what's up? What's up? You're all right. Bear with me. The comments just jumped on me real quick and easy. All right, Latoya's in the building. You're what's going on, hey, Latoya? All right, so Don says the honorable, uh, the honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey gave us one of the greatest examples of what is possible with you uni- when we unify. So, just for the record, it's got to put this in for everybody that's watching he live. And the replay. most hated men in America. <laughs> yeah, but the UNIA to this day is still the largest black movement anywhere in the world. They had chapters in the United States and the Caribbean. And I believe they have some in England as well as the continent. So I, you can't overlook that. You, can't no, you know who else was a Garvey? Um, Dr. Narcisse. But uh, we can keep going. Though. You know, I knew you was going to bring that up. Actually, I wanted to try to find some quotes, <laughs> um, but I couldn't. I couldn't. Man, let's see. All right. Molly, what's up, Molly? He says crypto answer reroute. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, cool. it's Yeah. It's coming. No pun intended. Listen, a lot of times the cast there, along with some other folks, thinks I, I think I'm a crypto hater. I'm not. You are. I'm not. I'm really not. It's by any means necessary, right? And when Malcolm X said that, he didn't just mean violence. He really meant yeah, it's necessary. So if crypto is a viable route, listen, man, we should take it. This is what has to be done. Make way. Because here I no, man, go ahead. I'm <laughs> right? <laughs> Willard, Willard's in the building. Up, Yo, you mighty race. It's historian. Shoot. For, for you can accomplish what you will. This Garvey quote I will recite to my children as I wake them up for grade school. Just those few words speak volumes of the honorable Marcus Garvey. Economic impact on the culture. Yes. He pushed for the pride of self, RBG or Red Rack and Green. That's needed to rise and get it done. That's what I'm saying. Up you mighty race. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I can say that with the Dr. Narcisse cadence and tone, <laughs> God, that would be nice. Yo, 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 just, Dr. yo. Narcisse, Dr. Narcisse is a legend, man. Listen, for the for the record, for the record, damn. What is what is his what's his name? What's Dr. Narcisse's real name? Um, the uh what's his name? Carlo, uh one of the greatest uh black actors ever. Yes, yes. I, I wanted to say that, but damn. His Carlos name escapes me right now. Something. I can't. Really know. Jeffrey Wright. You tell me. Jeffrey no, 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 no. Not, there not, it is. There that's, it is. that's Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright plays Dr. Narcisse. Yes, I was thinking about right. Giancarlo because Giancarlo is also amazing, by the way. Yeah. Right. Those Giancarlo two, is, is, is definitely amazing. But Jeffrey, Jeffrey, yeah, those right. two, those two are like very high on the list. Like they're they're amazing. Now, Carlo, yeah, he get busy, man. And so, and so does Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright is sick with it too. So but those I gotta two are, say this, right? I need y'all to go check out Jeffrey Wright's body of work. Since we're talking about Garvey, what he embodied in Boardwalk Empire was straight from the Garvey book, the corrupted side of the Garvey book. And you know we'll get, as Corey always says, people will be people. And so that, what they depicted was true in certain instances. But what he did and just, just delivering that, I, I think was nothing short of miraculous. Nothing yeah, he's, short. Amazing, he's an amazing uh, actor. All right, so Don Johnson says, overall, it's just a way to control women making money. Facts. Wait, a minute, what are we talking about? I'm we talking about um, OnlyFans. Oh, but there's dudes making money on OnlyFans too, though. No, but man. I got you. I got you. It's the, the vast majority. It is. Them. It is. It's women. They get in the bag on that. Some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Latoya says, "Yep, I don't even understand the IPO push anymore." What? Listen, the markets. The markets are plus for cash, so everybody's trying to get at it. Yeah, but they, they, was so great right now, they shouldn't really be worried about the IPO. To your point, Latoya. Yeah, that's why they trying to blame uh, Massacre in facts. Sidebar, I'm still shocked by everyone who play who pays for the, the P Orn <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Why are you shocked by that, Latoya? I'm not. It's yeah, funny. It's, I, I a, lot it free. a lot of it is free. Yeah, gang of it is free. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you want to pay your favorite content creator, then you you know, right. yeah, you 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 put money on their books, correct? Pretty much, you know, pretty much. All right, Karan's in the building. What's up, sir? Karan, man, how you, bro? Yeah. How you feeling? All right, no, oh, Molly, don't say that, bro. No. Don't say that. I got a trip coming up. Don't yeah. say that. No, no. They've been talking about it. Don't say that. Don't say that. 
I mean, you want me to lie to you? I don't want to do that. No, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm staying on the resort. Like, I'm staying in Sandals. So as long as I can go to my resort, I don't have to, like, be in the streets. Like, I could chill. Well, they still got a curfew, I think, though, right? So you ain't worried about that because you're yeah. in the resort. I'm on a private beach, bro. Yeah, I know. I know what about, about that. Sandals, Rick's? You still got to get to Rick's. Yeah. All right, that's what it says. Yep, I saw the clip. They support the racism, nothing more from, from 45. That was my take. All right. Yeah, 45 was a figurehead for his father. Yeah. Hey, Monica, Happy Sunday. All right, Monica says Stacey Abrams for the 21st century for me. Mm. But I don't think it's one person. We need a 21st century team. Definitely. Ooh, Definitely. I agree. I agree with you on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Garvey. I don't want to put this next one up, Don, but I'm going to put it up. Yeah. <laughs> No. Oh, man. Shout out to Dr. Umar and shout out to Jay. Yeah, no. man. No comment. Yeah. Um, well, Latoya says, what's going to motivate generations to come since we aren't sharing our history with intention? Mm. Mm. Take move and how it's been swept under the rug and watered down for this generation. Facts. Mm. Facts. 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 Ooh. Mm. Listen, if you are watching, if you are watching, just joining us, this is the Blackwell Project. Every week we come here and we talk about something substantial from the Black community and the Blackwell angle. Tonight, we are talking about the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. And we are here every week at 7 p.m. So do us a favor. Share this out with somebody else who needs to learn this history, like Latoya said. Mm -hmm. All right. So J.A. says, also, we should ponder, where does Garvey's philosophy stand today? W.E. Du Bois had, had beef with Garvey based on him wanting to move blacks to Africa. The boys wanted blacks to be in America and to be successful outside of the idea of us being African as a people, which both subscribe to which idea is relevant today. So this is what I'll say. Let me go first on this y'all. The problem with the beef with Marcus Garvey and why I don't talk about black folks publicly, not in a pejorative or nasty fashion is because they both had great ideas. They both were right. Both of them, but they wind up fighting themselves, whether it be Booker T um, against the boys or whether it be the boys versus Garvey. They were the cause of each other's downfall. And and so, but just just imagine if they could have just sat down in the room, hash it out, and said, "Well, listen, Booker T, it makes sense for us to be great tradesmen um, and be masters of our craft because we can then take that money and send our kids to school with it, and then yeah, we could have our kids in school." And they can become the quote unquote talent intent, right? Just for conversational sake, because we do need people to protect what we get. We need people in the courts. We need people in medicine. So instead of fighting, but, right? But, but does I that think make we could have. I, I think they could have figured it out. What's that, Corey? Well, does I mean, that make them the talent intent? Because you're not doing hard, you know, like hand work, whatever. That doesn't make you the talent intent. That just means you went to school. Yeah, I didn't want to go down that path. That wasn't my point, right? I'm not even, I'm not promoting talent attempt because it gets so much. Um, well, I mean, if you really read what the talent attempt is about, it's not just about like, you know, I, where I you know what right. I, I, right. and I, I agree, right? Because you could have smart, educated janitors, right? It doesn't always have to be formal, it could be informal. The goal is just to listen, man. I consider, I consider myself part of the talent attempt, but I like black Tims and black hoodies. Now, with that being said, Another part of that is you have to understand the powers that be um, in between those two. So it's very difficult for them to work together when you have people who are out to get them not to work together. You know what I mean? So like I, I would agree with that, Jimmy. But again, us, right, fast forward, damn near 100 years later, we're still making the same mistake. We saw, uh -huh. Malcolm, we saw Malcolm and Martin do the same thing. That's another example for us to learn from, even though it wasn't as bad as, as um, Garvey and the boys or or the boys with Booker T, they made the same mistake. Now they did communicate a little bit more. I'm about to say they they getting did. getting to a reckoning, um, but all of that could have been avoided. A, lar I mean, a large part of the it. reason I mean, that's the reason why the Black Panther Party for self preservation <laughs> came apart. Hey Kamar, you say you still see it with Sean King and um and Umar. No, I'm, not. I'm gonna leave it alone, man. But no, but but to your point though, there's always people in the middle that are trying to uh, to stop the unity, right? Because um the power is in the people. But if you keep them separated and keep them following each other, then you can't really go against the power. Is you in need the to number go. of the people because 
because we have a power. That's why government is called centralized government, because it's centralized into the hands of a smaller amount of people. But when the larger number of people unite, they can start to move the ideas up the smaller amount of people. We're supposed Understood, to but if you keep them fighting with each other, then they don't happen. No, that, that's the point. You're making the point. That's exactly the point. That's why confusion is yeah, that's what I'm one, saying. Of the greatest, one of the greatest tactics of the government. Because people don't fight against the government. Monica says she thinks Dr. Umar is a bit too divisive. I, I'm, I, I like when Dr. Umar talks about the educational portion. I, we need that part. What's up, Dwight, by the way? Here. Says he's just checking Dwight, Dwight, what's up? What's up? What's up, Dwight? All right, Latoya says, how many folks have the discipline to check their egos for the greater good? Great point, Latoya. Not many. Um, Ego is the enemy. Ego is definitely the enemy. And Ego is the devil. But you know, I, I think I think if we learn how to one recognize that we could have differing ideas, but at the end of the day, we still brothers and sisters. Absolutely. And so how can I help your idea and how can you help my idea? And how can our ideas possibly work together? I mean, I think cool. again, we have enough history if we just take the time to study it to learn from the past. And you might not like folks. And, and for the record, my commentary does not apply to the scandalous scammers of the world. They could all kick rocks. I don't care about them. No, that's right. They Kamari, Kamari hates Bitcoin. What's that? Kamari hates Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. I said Kamari hates Bitcoin. I no, love Bitcoin. But no, that's my brother. Bitcoin, we, still, we still work together. No, 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 no. Let's stop that. Bitcoin is just a, it's a financial tool. I have no problems with financial tools. There are no bad financial tools. It's just bad financial strategy. That's that's not true. <laughs> There's no terrible financial it. tools. All right, so Robbie says, all right, Robbie. Sorry, Robbie. Did y'all see the the what? The, the undies. The undies he posted the other day. I don't know who posted undies. Um yeah. no, that would be I hope she ain't talking about none of, the, none, of the, none of the fearless leaders that uh Don named, but I, I didn't post no undies. Did y'all post undies? No, 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 right. no, 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 sir. No. I, I was going all, to ask all I Tracy if she posted on these, but she might fight me fast and that. All I post is memes and food pics. That's pretty much it. <laughs> no. And Wawa, Wawa pics. Oh. Has been on Dr. Umar. So that would be a no. We didn't see the Dr. Umar's undie pics, but why is he posting undie pics though? Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I know. yeah, I don't follow God him that Dr. close. Umar. I missed that, but God now I know Dr. what to Umar. avoid. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that though. So anybody got <laughs> so Corey, who is your um your twenty first century? You said you had an idea of someone you were thinking about uh nominating. Master P. Because mm. my thing is he'll he he works with black people not exclusively, but he 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 tries to build black people and he will sell to anybody. That's the idea. And so if that's the idea, I'm with P. I'm with Master P. As a as a starting place, not to say like you said, not one person, but if we gonna build that team, I want him one. And, and I was gonna say like so. <laughs> <laughs> I see it, Jimmy. I see it. I know exactly what you're laughing at. In order to have like radical change, you're gonna need people who are willing to kind of step outside the lines of status quo, even if that means making a few people a little bit nervous or upset. Or uncomfortable. And, yeah, definitely uncomfortable. I don't think they should be the leaders, but I do think they should be on the council. Yeah. Well, I'll, right. I'll say this: a lot of people think King was the leader leader of civil rights. He was, and in some respects, he was. But there was a gay guy who had a whole lot of sway, and that called Bayard Rustin. And we oftentimes forget about Bayard that Rustin. Bayard. That's Bayard. what I said. Bayard. Bayard. You said I said nah. Bayard. You said Banyard. Oh, I thought I said Banyard. But a lot of times he gets lost and forgotten because he was gay. Um, but his contribution was just as important as any straight or gay yeah. man. He got a we great talk about the women that he was in Christ we, movement? We, Are we going to do that? He was an organizer. They were the his, his, strong suit was, his, his strong suit was strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And definitely. Which is just as important as organizing. No, definitely. Yeah, one without the other. No, yeah, but I, I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't consider him um, the leader. I don't think there is a leader. Um, 
I would consider Dr. King the face. Yeah. How about that? Thanks. Agree. All right. Why isn't Pete getting his flowers? I think Pete gets his flowers. He does. I do too. Um, Don Johnson is the honorable minister of Farrakhan. Um, I love the minister. Love, love, love the minister, but the minister is like 85. Mm-hmm. He's still looking younger than a 30 year old, but <laughs> he's 85. Definitely in the you know, No deaths. No deaths. We need new, yeah. new blood. You, 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 it's not even about new blood, right? Because he talks about it, right? We got to have the, the youth come up to that point, but. He's also 85. <laughs> so how much longer will he be around to, to even be in the 21st century? Um, and I don't want to speak. Well, first, yeah, I we feel already like a dub a in. Huh? We, we already a Listen, dub I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like the problem is we still um, are looking for a leader. leadership and not following ideas and culture. Right? We're looking for one. So, We're looking for the one, the Messiah. Yeah, we need... We need we, yeah, yeah, and that's not what it really is about. It's about, you know, it's about culture and ideas and principles. Yep. But I feel like if enough people with enough to bring to the table came together in a council fashion and kind of said, "Hey, you know, this person, Master P, you know, whoever else, Stacey Abrams, all these other people put together and got into a council and was like, we're going to affect change." A lot of people would sit up and listen just because of what everybody seated brings to the table and the dynamic that's so completely different that would actually work. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you you would have a number of folks because I mean, at the end of the day, most people are followers, but then you'll have the other half who's like, you know, we'll, hey. we'll combat that. We'll, we'll definitely combat that because they're not a part of it. Like, <laughs> but you know, from the saying? audience, we, we, gotta gotta side, we gotta see what side Black Twitter fall on. But see, my thing is, is, is you know, people are, are wave riders, and there's, you know, no people wave riders, right? Yeah. You build the wave big enough, they get on, no matter what the wave is, right? And the problem so, with that is, to Corey's point, right, Dr. King was, I don't want to call him a wave rider because he wasn't, but there was a point where his wave kind of ended, and people just let him flounder, and they forgot about him. And then when the war came up and he was able to talk about the war, efforts and all of that, which he'd already been doing anyway, then they kind of reinvigorated him to a certain degree. But to Corey's point, people love the ride waves. To the White's point, because the White's in the comments, right? He always talks about celebrity culture and how we are all tuned to follow celebrity culture. Yeah. Where are the ones who are just in the trenches getting the work done? Those are the ones to me that I want to see um as leadership. I I mean listen, this is no diss against me. The Dane Dashes, the Puffies, the Jay Zs, but I want to see the actual people that are in the trenches be the leaders, not not the the best names or the biggest names. No, That's no, I, I get your point because we do have a problem with celebrity culture, and you know, um, I'll never repeat what I said one time, but I think that yep. uh, Dwight, Dwight Dwight said what I said in a, in a, in a, a lot a lot better way by saying decentralized. Yep, because that's how you know, um, you know, that's how the country is built. Speaking of Bitcoin, but no, decentralized, because I, th- I think that decentralization is bigger than even just crypto. I'm talking about in terms of leadership, um, even as it pertains to even as it pertains to us now talking about black wealth and folks having income, your income has to be decentralized. Mm-hmm. You have you can't have everything centralized in one source with anything these days. You just can't because, I, you know, the pandemic didn't teach you anything else. I cut that one thing off and you're done. Same with leadership, the same with your income, the same with your money, all of it. Everything decentralized. But there's levels to it, right? So you can't just, just like, and Jimmy, I know what you're saying, and I don't disagree. What I'll say, though, about the money and, and multiple streams of income is that there's a lot of people out here making 10 grand a year saying, I want multiple streams of income, but... I mean, well, it's context to everything. I'm not, I'm not speaking to them specifically. No, 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 I got you. But I, I just wanted to make that point because a lot of people are like, well... I'm gonna have a job as a as a graphic designer, and then I'm gonna start, go sell Amway. No, just the Amway. But a lot of times we're not finding that. That was a lot of Amway shade right there. No, no shade, Amway no shade. That just was came one of the biggest. First. You was about big businesses in the 20th century. All right, Monica says Bayard. All right, so yes, I was saying it wrong. Bayard Rust, Rustin is called a great organizer, but they definitely downplayed his role because he was openly gay. Yep. Mm-hmm. They, they played him out. 
Now, Karan, who's David missed- Gross? Does anybody know who David yeah, Gross? Yeah, he's a real estate developer on the West Coast. But you missed the. Uh, oh, oh, oh I, I maybe did get to it. I saw um, Karan say Killer Mike. Oh no, I didn't see that. I'm here for Killer Mike. Yeah, I'm not on, on some levels. I think Killer Mike can be like the next. Um, um, if, you go, if you go go that route, then you got to go David Banner. I was gonna say that David was the, Banner. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember his name, but yeah. David I Banner. like David Banner as well, um, but I don't. I mean, that's think not he's his, That's be, not his government, but you know, he's right. not going to be as digestible to the masses as some. All right, uh, the White says decentralized leadership has to be the the way forward. Facts. Lesson learned from the Panther Party. It, lesson learned from the Panther Party, civil rights movement, mm-hmm. the UNIA, mm-hmm. um, a, a lot of organizations. They tried to decentralize the the power. Because they tried to spread the power out across the country and have stations across the country, and but everything still came out of Oakland, though. The directors, the mass directors, still came out of Oakland. I mean, that's the way our country is built. All right, so uh, more people's campaign brought him back. Right? Yes. Yes. So you so you want you, you want to skip over Rich's other comment earlier? Mm. Uh, the Bitcoin comment. I didn't skip over it. I saw it. <laughs> you didn't skip over it. You ain't right. You ain't right. right past that joint. <laughs> now, is that is that Trey from, from Boys and Hell when he was fighting? When he was in Nia Long's place? Or is that the different Trey? When he saw his man get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all caught that. All right, Latoya says, not Puffy. I don't trust him with black people. No. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. David I don't, I don't think so either. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Monica says, I find it interesting that a, that a lot of choices are males. Facts. Because we live in a, we, because <laughs> our, because the only thing more hated than black people in this country are women. Black women. Women, period. Black women more than other women. <laughs> All right. So uh, that being said, I nominate Tracy. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. I nominate Courtney since she ain't here. <laughs> All right. Who are you showing Courtney Love since she here? Uh, I gotta tell her this. Yeah. Come on, you love. Every time she don't show up, you show her love. I noticed that too. Yeah. You, you only say good stuff about her when she's not here. Right. Only when she's not here. I can't tell it to her face and it'll go to her head. You know. <laughs> can't ever. Got, oh, okay. Got you. Got yeah. you. Got you. Got that makes sense. All right. Jay Patterson says, as far as a single person, I'm not sure. Who we have one right now, if we have one right now. But someone to look out for is King Randall. He is for the he is of the X for Boys school. He actually is going to communities teaching and showing love skills to young boys. He is militant, can start a movement. Hey, okay. I gotta look him up. I'm not familiar with um right, not familiar with his body King of work. Randall. That sounds amazing though. Uh, the white taking shots at me. <laughs> Call me Camaro. That's what that's what the bleach color folks be calling me. All right, Karan says, uh, <laughs> I see Mike and David Banner are two completely different waves. I know I'm one of the more radical waves. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ro- Robbie, black women. Yeah, yeah. Black women rock. Yes, they do. Um, I think that would be dope. I do think, I do think the 21st century will be. A black woman or black women um that will do something monumental like that i think everybody is tired of men especially white men at this point and we're definitely tired of black men who just want to emulate white men so tired. what'd you say tracy sick and tired yes so i will be i will be for that i mean if you really want to go back in antiquity black women have always kind of ran things in some way shape form or fashion we still so. do. We still do. We're the next. Y'all ahead. <laughs> I mean, listen, oh, that's where all rest, that's where the, the, the phrase resting on the seat of power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where it comes from. Mm-hmm. But hey, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> all right. So the white says King Randall's a bit political, like a red hat wearing, wearing black dude. Uh, so I gotta look this brother up, man. He must be out here wilding. I need to see. I need to see. Uh, yeah, I gotta see the shenanigans. 
Yeah, I'm with that. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm with all that. All right, so Jose's here, right? You're Jose, okay. you missed all the love. Jose, we gave you, we had a whole Jose Jose Sanchez segment, and you pull up after it. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Jose out there selling books. But listen, Jose, again, congratulations to Jose for, for publishing his book with his co-authors as well. Make okay. sure everybody goes out to get it. Real quick, if y'all missed it, if y'all missed it, just let me throw it up on the screen one more again. One more again. Give me one second. I got it right here. Reflections of Love, Lust, and Romance. You can cop that on Amazon right now. Again, Reflections of Love, Lust, and Romance. Penned by our very own Jose Sanchez. So we always got to support one of our own. So everybody go out and cop Jose's book. I'm going to cop the book and I'm about to kindle tonight. So Jose, I'm going to need me and Jimmy. We all need our autograph. We need your autograph. Yeah, man. So tell me if I got to send it to you, what we got to do. Yeah. All right. So we talking about Garvey. We're reflecting on Garvey. It's the 21st century. What can we take from Garvey's teachings and lessons and apply in the 21st century? I'm, I'll start. Uh, relationships. Relationships are the, 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 the greatest form of currency. Right? Relationships put you in places that money can't put you. Relationships put you in, in places that power can't put you. Relationships are power, right? As human beings, we're built to relate to one another. And if, and especially culturally, if we relate to one another, they can't stop our power. So we have to build relationships the way Garvey built his relationships. Now, he might not have built the greatest relationships with everyone, but he built relationships big enough that, like Kamari said, he built the biggest black organization in the history, of, you know what I mean, in, 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 in recent history. And so that's all about relationship building. So let's build relationships so that we can build, you know, build culture and the things that we need to do to get to where we need to go. Facts. What about you, Tracy? What do you think? Um... I definitely feel like in this day and age, if you haven't been to Africa, you definitely need to do that book. And um, I don't know if anybody's actually seen the the show High on the Hog, that um, Netflix special where it kind of highlighted food that came from Africa that actually is of our ancestral heritage and we use it today. It's so much history that comes out of Africa that I do feel like if someone in your family or in your generation that you have been able to reach out and touch has not been or you haven't had anybody in your family that has gone to Africa, it really, really is important for your lineage and your heritage to have experienced it and to understand the connection to the life that we live in this America. So I will definitely say his main teaching of that. I still believe in that. I still understand that. And I still think it's necessary even in 2021. Right. Shout out to Iron Hall. They just got renewed for another yes. season. So yes, they did. We got to review, yeah, yeah. review that, y'all. Did y'all watch it? Did we talked about it on here. Did y'all watch it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah had me over there me crying on. over yams. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, I got I got to respond to the, the comment that um Robin put in the comments, bro. So Robbie, yeah. So some, friends. Yeah, I'll be on that all the time. But I think so not to speak for you, Corey, but to speak for you because I we kind of on the same wave, right? It's not that we don't want new friends, but we got plenty of friends. And so the friends that we do acquire, let's say now going forward, I think we want them to be genuine. I don't think we're afraid of friendship. Yeah, I'm not. But we probably learned over these. I'm not, no, I'm, 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 for me, I, I never I'm, go I'm into never on that shit. I'm, no, look, I never go into a relationship looking for friendship. Right. right. So I'm not stuck on the friendship part of it, right? Because my goal is not to be friends. My goal is to help you to get to where, whether we're friends or not. So it, friendship doesn't, friendship isn't a prerequisite for me to help people. Right. So I'm not looking for new friends all the time. 
And right. that's a nuance. That's, that's, that's weird coming from you, because I think now see that's weird coming from you because you've told me in the past that you only want to work with people that you have a relationship I, oh, no. with that long term. Long term. If somebody somebody I don't like is hungry and I'm walking by with a sandwich, I'm gonna feed them. Right. Right. But if they talking about putting them up in long term housing and, and doing something long term with that person, that's never going to work because our we're not aligned in any kind of way. I'm not talking about helping somebody, you know, build build a new Africa or something like that. I'm talking about I will help people at wherever point they are. Right. And for me. but you talk like about you, Corey, as a long term like, relationship, I can't work long term with somebody I don't like. That's but never it's gotta be organic. Yeah, but see, a, a friend, a friend doesn't have to be a long term relationship. On, Hold on, it's gotta be organic though, right? Because there's some people out here who are moving and shaking and they've been told to network and make friends, but yeah. they're only it's doing goofy. it because they look to gain from it, right? And the reason why I said I get with Corey is the same way. If I'm a, I'm gonna help people, I'm not looking to get anything out of it. I'm not trying to do this passive aggressive way to become your friend. I'm going to try to help because we people. Yeah, like I'm going to do it yeah. because that's what I do. That's right. necessarily confl- I like I think that and con- and friendship is conflated a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't I don't look at friendship as having like a time limit, right? Cuz I also think this difference between being a friend and being family, right? Cuz to me, and then there's a true. difference between being then there's a difference between being a family and a relative. Like those are all three different things, friends, family, and relative, right? Mm-hmm. So um, there are people that I've probably met over the last couple of years who are who I would consider a better friend than people I've known for 20, 30 years. Like that's just what it is. Um, but the thing is, I, I'm I'm not on it, uh, no new friends tip too, because again, when we talk about relationships as 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 being as powerful as they are, you you always you just never know like when someone comes into your life, and it could be for a reason. Like I really believe in that. So um, but I agree that with, with, with um, what Robbie is saying that some of us be on that tip and we miss out on opportunities because of that, mm-hmm. because we're so stuck on there's no new friends and, 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 and not putting ourselves out there. We miss out on opportunities. So um, I understand what she's saying. All right. All right. So she says what I'm saying is that we are clickish. Yes. When new people show up, the wagons get circled. So, so the, the word you're saying is tribal. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's why. There's no giant movements because generally people are tribal. I mean, people, Africans were tribal. Like, people are tribal. And so small, you know what I mean? Because once it gets too big, it, it goes from being a tribe to a mob. Right. And then you start getting mob mentality. Right. And so it's it's a there's a line where, where it goes I from being tribal care about it. to being mobbish. And I'm not I'm not saying. Go ahead, go ahead, Tracy. No, I was just gonna say I just don't think it's anything wrong with vetting. I right. think you need no, to not vet at all. people who are in your circle, whether they are transactional, whether they are long term, whether they friend, family, or relative, they need to be vetted. So if there is something that is surface level and we allow you to kind of be in our space from something that's public, that's one thing. But if you want to sit at the table, like you gotta be vetted first. No, that's that, that's a fact. No, that's an absolute fact. You don't let everybody at the table. I mean, you know, it, only tribe I care about is the one called Quest, though. <laughs> I mean, but you know, but to that point, though, I think people throw the term around friends very loosely. Yeah, they, they will say that somebody they meet today for five minutes is their friend, and my mother yeah. raised me not to not to take that word lightly, and so that's yeah. what I'm on again. I'm open to friendship if it's genuine, if it's real. But I also know there are a lot of users out there. And then they'll try to get into, you know, your proximity because you know some folks. For example, again, my cousin that Tracy sent me, she's actually pretty influential, right? And then I, I found when people know that I know somebody that's influential, you're like, oh, let me get at this person. Correct. But you ain't even did the work. <laughs> you haven't Correct. added any value to anybody to even get vetted in the first point. So that that's what I mean by that. But I'm not opposed to friends. I'm not opposed to friends. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that's the conversation about vetting when it comes to this new friends or, 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 or no new friends or circles. Because whenever you're in a circle, what I have access to, typically you have access to. So I can't allow you the assumption of believing that because you 
sat at a table with me or you came someplace with me that now you have access to all of my friendships, relationships, and other things that I've built lifetimes, you know, yep. to, to have access to. And that's one of the misconceptions I do believe is from a lot of the newer generations now is that they were taught that networking is supposed to get them that access. Okay. No, networking gets you an email address. And, it, and it's funny, right? Dame Dash talks about this a lot. He talks about people hiding and protecting the plug. And I love Dame. I think Dame's a genius, but I don't agree with Dame on that particular thing because of what Tracy just said. Yeah. People don't honor a lot of things and they will go and mess up your whole situation. Whole situation. Because they don't. Well, what you got? What you got to do in that situation is like, hey, someone asked for your contact. I, you, you, you up front with that person. I don't know. I don't know him. You know what I mean? Like, I can't vouch for him like that. But you know what I'm saying? You got to have that conversation too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, got listen, you. I do that all the time. I put people on to the things that I'm not, you know, all the time. But my my thing is, I, you know, if you're my friend, because I will treat you like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. And I'm just, it's just kind of, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not hard. Like, because I don't treat everybody the same. I don't try to. I treat my friends a lot different than I treat everybody else. I treat my family a lot different than I treat everybody else. As you should. There's levels to this. Exactly. I, I I think that's the point, though. Like, there are people who are super genuine and actually stand behind their words and the people that they honor in their relationships. And then there are some people who a either weren't taught that or people who really, really are very loose with all of their terminologies and friendships. So now I have to vet you to see which box you fit in. Are you a genuine? Are you a, a line, a habitual line stepper? Or are you somebody who's just looking for transactional relationships. And I think that's the purpose of circling the way again and, and, and verifying whether or not, you know, you should be in a circle or be no All right, All right well, let's, get to this. let's get to this next comment, y'all. Um, Jay Patterson says, I wouldn't call King Randall a red hat, but he's definitely getting at Democrats for failed policies. But King Randall is 21 and he takes boys close to his age out of juvenile detention and teaches them to build houses, fix cars. He came to NYC in the Bronx this summer to teach the boys how to change oil and replace brakes. He's a sharp young brother. Okay, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I found his page, and, and I'm definitely following the young brother now. Like, I didn't even realize he was 21. That's even more amazing. So I see the yeah. work. Shout out to I, him. The only thing I would say about this, because I think this is really dangerous in this time right now, um, I guess a lot of black folks are trying to come at Democrats for their failed policies. But just they don't realize so. that just as many failed policies are at the hands and fault of Republicans as well. So See, but I hate smoke. that too, though. I hate that too. I hate that. Keep like, the smoke. Keep the smoke all the way around because neither one is better than the other. They no, but that's the but that's the thing. But like, and they, and they all do it though. Everybody does that. When you point at one person, they say, "Well, what about them? They failed at this." Like they all fail. So we 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 have the right to criticize all of them. Like you know, I yeah. hate when people do that. Don't criticize I, them. Just, Say something to the other side. Like everybody did say something to the other side. They were getting, they were critical of them the entire time. Like they, you, you trying to tell me they weren't critical of forty five? Wait a minute, are you talking to me specifically? No, I'm or? saying no, 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 no. I'm saying in general, people were critical of forty five. So now it's like he's gone. No, this time is oh, little, come man. on, man. There's a there's there's a lot of black folks that that love forty five, man. I ain't gonna say no names, but they and what they do is they mix a little bit of facts with a whole lot of lies. And a lot of people don't have yeah, not done the history, and so they don't know any better. My, listen, I'm in quite my frank. experience. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm be quite frank. My son is one of them, so it drives me crazy that they no, hey, talking about what has Biden done. Yada, 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 in yada. my experience, well, we never show. hold. Let me finish. Okay. They they're all trash, but we got to learn how to look through a critical and discerning lens on everybody, and I think. We've gotten to this point because you, you got a couple of bills that were trashed by the Dems and we're only focused on that and we're not talking about anything else. But go ahead, Jim. My point is, in my experience, we never hold the Democrats um, accountable for anything. And in my experience, 
our vote is taken for granted. In my experience, we've made a lot of mistakes with just jumping into bed with them. And that's not to say that the other side, but the thing is I can be critical of them and it doesn't mean that I'm talking great about the other side. They are all trash. And I should yep. be able to be, I should be able to be critical of them without you bringing up the other side. You bring up the other side is irrelevant to the fact that their policies are failing our people. I'm just but talking about the one thing. Side. they're all trash. If we're, if we're gonna go down that route, you can't just say get off the democratic plantation and say let's go to Republican plantation because that's what's happening. They're saying let's get off the Democratic plantation and become Republicans. That ain't the answer, fam. That ain't the answer because again, they're both trash. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen it. I guess we like okay. We're seeing, yeah. we're seeing different things. I'm not seeing anybody say let's go down that side. I'm I, just seeing that, that's what I see. So I guess I, yeah, I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing people that want to hold them accountable. And every time they try to hold them accountable, it's like, well, that's really a republic. It's like who cares? Like forget them right now. Forget them. Let's talk about Jim Crow Joe and what he's doing. All right, so let's go to uh, what Don's talking about. <laughs> so Don said after the Breakfast Club interview, I've been off dang mindset. What he was saying was foolish. Um, I don't want to go down that. I get, I get the sentiment of what he was saying. The delivery was trash. I but think I, to me, I get the sentiment. To me, what was most powerful about that 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 Breakfast Club interview is you can see the change in the, the folks he were talking to, the hosts up there. You can see the change in them and their business ever since then. Yep. You know, look at some of the things they're doing in terms of them bossing up. So they yeah, heard him right. loud and clear. Like, like a, lot even, a lot of people don't even right. talk about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, they so, didn't give up their day but, job, but he, they, he was right. He was right. Yeah, they went and built up. A, they they went and built them side hustles and built them up into tr tremendous businesses. That happened all post Dame Dash. I get your point though, Don. Everything he's saying, like you know, and it's it's really what Kamari's saying is the delivery was crazy, but right. his message was heard by a lot of folks. By a lot of folks. And sometimes you gotta push people over the line to see that they have been sitting doing too nothing close to the line. <laughs> yeah, like they ain't been doing a damn thing. Correct. Correct. And it's kind of what you said earlier, Tracy. You need people like that. Like mm -hmm. they may not have to be at the forefront, but you, you need people to like be rabble rousers, as the uh, old folks call them. Yep, I tell people all the time. I'm he I'm here for the young folks out here pushing the line, acting a fool, ready to just you know go to toe to toe for what they want because we need that energy. It just has honed by wisdom and strategy and resources. But I'm here for it. Yep, let's mm -hmm. get. All right, everybody say what's up to Alvin. To how you doing, Alvin? You're Alvin, right, what's up, bro? How you been? How you been, hey. fam? What's going on? says nothing works for black people in this country, so shrugs. <laughs> yeah. Right, Jose, says, Jose says nothing works in part because we don't work with one another to our own collective benefit. I agree with that, Jose. One thousand percent. Both things can be true at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Richard says he came back on the show and Charlemagne told him he was right. Good. As he I didn't see that, but I, I mean, he said Dame has said that he, what was said and the way it was carried wasn't what he really meant. He wasn't trying to say that the working man is bad mm -hmm. or anything like that. He was just like Tracy said, trying to give folks the push and the battery to say, yo, yeah. let's go. Let's get the, it going. The, the, the cold hard reality of what he was saying got through to a lot of people like yeah. you're not a boss unless you employing other people you're not a boss yeah. unless the people around you eat and you're not like he yeah. really was putting it on him like that interview was a seminal moment in black wealth right. <laughs> Definitely, you, yo you 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 joking but you are not lying i'm dead serious i'm dead ass serious you know, but i get down though a lot of stuff he was saying just didn't like you know um like literally make sense right but it's the energy. It's the energy, and I think that the folks that he was trying to talk to, he talked to them. Mm -hmm. right. Complacency is is a real issue in pushing forward in wealth, and you need those disruptors to literally push you over that line to see just how much you're not doing, and that's what he did. He pushed them. Right. Now, was there anything else, just kind of going back to Garvey, was there anything else that Garvey was pushing for that you all would say we should keep going with now or recreate now? In the 21st century, RBG flag. We got to fly that. Mm. 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 Now, now, some folks like the other flags, right? They want the the the, the Black American flag or the Jamaican flag. Which flag you want to do, Jimmy? 
Honestly, to be completely transparent with you, I wasn't aware of that Black American flag till like two weeks ago and it went viral yeah. online. Like, I was, I had no I idea. Was, I didn't know it was there. I yeah, and I still yeah, don't kind of understand it though with the sword though. Like you know, I mean, I don't know what that really means, but I mean, I'm RBG though. Right. Yeah, that's what I grew up on. Right. Yeah. Right. On that All RBG. Right. All right. Well, let's red, see. the black, and the green. It's a key. <laughs> now, Jimmy, you just let me down, man. You just let me what? down. This is like you didn't say the, the best part of that. Oh, then. Well, because I I, I don't know if that is going to get us canceled it's, it's in 2021. Oh, you know, and not right. <laughs> is that a bad word now? Yes. 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 I might be. I'm not sure, so I left it alone. It oh is. man, I'm so on a platform like this, yes, we don't want it. I, I, yeah, I'm just chilling, man. I am so confused. that was self censoring. Yes. All right, Monica says be more be conscious about where we spend our dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and and we, and be more conscious about the way we raise our daughters. But go ahead. Mm. <laughs> All right. Jose says, got the lines tonight. He got back. the bars. <laughs> Jose, Jose says Denzel Washington said that complacency is the biggest. It's a bigger detriment. Progress. Than failure, it is. It's a bigger determinant uh, to progress than failure, and that has stuck with me. It's he's a fact. He's right. The he's truth right. Is that that yes. hunger that it's right in your gut that says I need more, I want more. If it's not there, I deserve more. Huh? Yeah, I'm worthy yeah, of being failure. More. Failure is not the, the thing about failure is that it's not the end, right? If you get another day, then failure is just another chance, and that, that is just a data point. Failure is just a data point, right? right. Like I can't that's do a, that. That's a t-shirt. Yes. Failure is I'm, just a I'm, data I'm, point. That's yo, I'm point. still on that. I'm still on that. Is that your bar? Because I'm about to steal it. I'm tweeting that. That's my bar because that's what I tell kids. That's my bar that I tell kids. Oh man, I'm failure still on that bar. I'm about, to, I'm, about, I'm about to tweet that out right now. Like that's a yeah. bar. Do it. But that, yeah, that's I'm, what I tell kids because especially when they got live so long, failure is just def. It's just a data point. That's all it is, is because all you're t- doing is taking the data to tell you what not to do. Correct. Listen, That's it. my little league coach used to tell me, I said, complain about stuff. He said, well, did you die? And you know, I got what he was saying. But then I think in retrospect, I was like, I was like eight years old. He probably shouldn't have been saying that. But, you know, <laughs> so, shout, out, shout, out to, shout out to Mr. Anderson from up Mallory, man. I still remember that to this day. <laughs> but- now, Don has a point. Don, I think he was. But what do you say to that, Jimmy? Wasn't DJ MV? No, he no, he wasn't though, Don. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. He talked about it when he's back up there. He wasn't. No, he he wasn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He was looking into it. He had just met the boy. He really wasn't. Right. MV MV didn't have anything that he has now. He got motivated by it. Yeah. He definitely. All right, Monica says it's hard to appreciate success if you haven't failed. Facts. I don't believe you can actually call yourself a success if you haven't experienced any failure. Like. Don't don't talk to me about what you've gained in a real estate sense if you haven't been through a crash or a market correction. Like I can't. Man, listen. All I all I talk about is my mistakes in real estate. <laughs> That's all I talk about. I don't even talk about the success stories. All I talk about is how I effed up. <laughs> listen, they step in stones and they are definitely uh, war scars. Hey Corey, don't don't do. Hey Corey, I'm letting you know. Don't say that online tonight, man. Because I'm still on your. But I'm gonna quote you. But I'm, let me say that for the morning. That's my that's my morning tweet, man. Let me get my morning tweet off. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I Thank think you, the brother. Black Bull Project will tweet it first. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. I don't got no control over. Hey, no, if you, hey, listen. I don't care. That's, I don't that's, have that's, no that's control. That's family. That's family. Tweet, you, you tweet it first. All I'm gonna do is screenshot it. I was gonna quote the above average savage, man. That's a bar, man. It's nothing but a data point. That's hard. That's definitely a bar. That's definitely a bar. Listen, there was a lot of bars tonight. Shout out to Tracy in the car. Tracy in the car. The new car with the new butter with the new roof came through as always shining. Drop shining, bars. Yo. Shining, shining, yep. shining, shining, shining. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy got on one of the top five t-shirts I've ever seen, yo. Because if you know, you know, but most people ain't even gonna catch that one. I'm I'm saying? I, I know I know three of those four. Billy Ray, <laughs> Coleman, and Ophelia. Come on, man. You know them all. You know them all. You know them all. You know them all. If you know one of them, you gotta know them all. They all go together. They no, they was all in the um, they was all in the trading places. Yeah, yeah. There you so go. you know, there you go. that's the squad. That's the squad we talking about. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just drawing a blank on who Ophelia was. That's that's, that's all right. That was the girlfriend. 
That was the white girl. Okay, all right. Jamie, That's, I was just drawing a blank. I was like, damn, who won't feel you? I couldn't. <laughs> but listen, y'all. Inga from y'all. Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inga yeah. from Sweden. But listen, y'all, we appreciate you all tuning in with us every week. I'm looking for some more topic ideas. Y'all got to jump into the Blackwell Project group. Let us know what y'all think we should be talking about, what we should be examining. So if you are not a member of the of the Blackwell group, go on over to Facebook, search The Blackwell Project. Come on in the group, have a good time with us, and spark up a conversation on what new topics we should get at. But again, appreciate you all. Super grateful that you're here with us every week. And as always, next Sunday, 7 p.m., we'll be back with The Blackwell Project. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.